After having spent the night in Hells, I woke up to a beautiful sunrise. The harbor had shut down for the season, so I won't ask to pay for the night I spent there, but it also meant that the toilets on the harbor were closed. I don't have a holding tank aboard Obelix, so the first order of business became to locate a public bathroom. Luckily, there is a public bathroom located very close to the harbor in a little red shed right next to the tiny ferry that crosses Limfjorn between Hels and Ense. The little ferry seems to run almost continuously in the morning, and I stood there for a good while watching the ferry as it made its way across the fjord. What a gorgeous way to start the day. The goal for the day was to make it from Hels to Alborg. A short trip of about 16 nautical miles. There was no wind and of course that meant motoring. At my usual slow speed it would take me about four and a half hours to cover the distance. But all I really needed to make sure of was that I was past the two bridges in Olbor before 7pm or I would get stranded on the wrong side of them. So I had plenty of time and I was in no hurry to get going. When I finally did cast off the lines, I was treated to a beautiful sunrise and nice, cool, crisp air. I enjoyed breakfast with the sun warming my face. What a wonderful feeling. Even though it is winter and the sun sits quite low in the sky at this time of year, I was still able to feel the warmth of the sun. And that made all the difference in the world. I came across one other sailboat, but other than that, I had the place to myself. This part of Limfjorn is used by a lot of heavy commercial traffic, and all along the fjord there are obvious signs of industry. I guess if I were the owner of a huge coal-burning power plant, I might like the idea of placing a few windmills in front of my plant, just to try and add a touch of green and seem a little bit more friendly towards the environment. But, <laughs> really, I doubt those six rather small windmills changes much of anything. My trusty old Volvo Penta MD6A were humming along, and in a matter of four hours we had reached the outskirts of Olbor. This is the first bridge in Olbor I needed to pass. It's used by cars and pedestrians, and it opens every hour on the hour, but as I mentioned earlier, it stays closed during the night. I've always had a hard time doing a nice, smooth pan with a camera. It turns out the uh, secret is to simply pan using the boat instead of using the camera. Just as I was uh, about to complete my pan, the bridge signaled that it was about to open. The second bridge is used solely by trains. It'll open whenever there are no trains approaching. Oblix and I made it safely into Vestrabødhavn Harbor, where I tied up next to a very nice Bavaria 35. Oh, the luxury it would be to have standing headroom. I wanted to show you guys some of Olbor. But by the time I had finished checking the engine and tidying up, all I really wanted to do was to sit down and start editing some video. I promise you, you will get a tour of Olbor, which is the fourth largest city in Denmark, sometime next summer. Sadly, I don't have any video of the last leg of the trip to Skive. I was joined aboard by Emil and we had a lot of fun sailing the rest of the way to Skive. It was awesome having him aboard. In my next video, I will go into more details about why I wanted to move Obelix to Skive. That's it for this time, guys. As always, feel free to leave a comment, and uh, I do try to respond to every single comment, and if I've missed any, I'm sorry. And of course, if you haven't already, please click subscribe. See you!